What I'm about to show you, we have never revealed before, and I've always felt very uncomfortable putting this room on any form of social media. All right, what this is, is in a, in a mission to try and be more transparent with what we do here at The Perch Projects, we're gonna try and open up more and show a lot more of what is going on behind the brand. I mean, this, this might turn into some kind of episodic thing. It's the type of thing that I don't think is gonna to appeal to a lot of people, but also I think there's a lot of people who wanna start businesses and stuff, and they might find some things in this video valuable. So if you're not into it, sorry. If you are, then wicked. But yeah, this is our house. Thankfully, we have a lovely top floor where uh, we've converted it essentially into an office. This is essentially kind of where a lot of the stuff goes on. Are we gonna do, uh, are we gonna do a walk and talk? Am I, are you just gonna follow me around? I think one thing that you need to realize if you're gonna try and get into sort of anything, anything business related really, but like you wanna run a parkour brand, there's gonna be a lot of downtime where you're not actually out doing fun action-y things. And that's why I really wanted to create a space that felt like a kind of productive, nice room. I bought a mannequin that is essentially an extra large so that we could try and fit extra large clothes better. I don't even know how tall he'd actually be because his head would be about here. But I'm obviously not a very tall person. I think the hardest thing to keep on top of a lot of the time is just keeping track of things and you'll see there's a lot of whiteboards and paperwork and stuff dotted around the place. This, by the way, is a Keelan space. I ended up buying a second desk and then surprised him with his own stool, which took him about a day to realize that he was sitting on a stool and I was also sitting on a stool. To anyone who listens to the Merch Podcast, which if you don't, you should, this is essentially where it happens. And if you ever hear anyone sort of smack a body part on a ceiling, it's probably because they're sitting here and they've twatted their head off of that. As you can see, we have sample rails and samples hanging up all over the place. Some old pieces, some new pieces, some pieces that will never come out. I have two of these duplicated and I mean I have footage dating back from I think 2009. That's RCA, special things that I've backed up. Like the fear of losing footage like that is too, is, is too big. It's, this stuff is kind of in a way too valuable in terms of the history of parkour. So I, I really want to keep everything safe. What we're gonna try and do in these videos moving forward is just show more of what is going on behind the scenes of the brand. There's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes and we've always kept it fairly behind closed doors because it's not that exciting, but I think also some people are interested in it. There's not much else to show in here at the moment. Thankfully, we're fairly on top of work. We're gonna head up to where we keep all of our stock, which is at my mum's house. One of the conditions when we bought that house from Sarah was that the stock couldn't come with us because we were living in a one bedroom flat and the stock was already taking up a lot of space. Renting units around this area is incredibly expensive. We were moving to the same town as my mum. Still don't know whether or not that was a sensible thing or not. But she has a rather large room in her house that she wasn't using. I mean, essentially the room is now full and it's taking up too much of our time to pack them all the time. So what we are about to do in the next week is move all of our stock to a fulfillment center. I've always been hesitant to move the stock because I like, I guess it's a control thing. I'd like to sort of be, be able to see it, be able to check it out. We've had issues in the past with quality and things and it helps to have all the stock in one place to check over that stuff. The reason why I'm gonna show you all this stuff is because this is kind of the last opportunity to do so and then it's then it's it's moving and it's gone. I think my mum secretly loves me coming around to do the stock because she just gets to see me more often. So anyone who ever thinks about breaking into this place, we do have ferocious, ferocious guard dogs. Oh no, I'm so ow, I'm so scared. Gilly, you need to calm the fuck down, little one, because. Oh, well, you just literally fell over. Look, calm down, calm down, because we're filming something important and you're just absolute chaos and you're going to ruin the video. Calm down, calm down. Look, 
calm down. Four. No, that's double four. Sit. Sit. No. Julie, sit. One of the unfortunate truths of running a clothing brand is that sometimes people will return things, whether it be just an exchange for size or there's a problem with the product. And you have to deal with it. For the last sort of year and a half, any any customer interaction or return has almost certainly either been with myself or occasionally my mum who also helps out when I'm away. But yeah, every, everything that happens with packing orders and, and anything else literally happens here. What I'm about to show you, we have never revealed before and I've always felt very uncomfortable putting this room on any form of social media. I've, I've always felt like I should, it, it should be bigger than this. I've always been embarrassed that like, it's in a room in the house. I've always thought, oh, if I'm running a brand and it's doing all right, then I should have a warehouse or something. And I think really, they're just restrictions that I've put in my own head thinking that like, oh, that's, that's how it should be. But actually this is how it is. And I shouldn't be embarrassed or ashamed of that. And then essentially this is the stock room. And as you can see, it is floor to ceiling with stock on the verge of overflowing. When Solar Story comes in, it's that we're just simply gonna have too, too much. Like, we have to be expanding and that's why we're moving everything to fulfillment. So this is honestly one of the last times I'll be in here and it will look like this. So the thing about moving to fulfillment is that it costs more money, but then it saves a lot of time because this is obviously a fairly time consuming thing. I could technically pay someone to do it for me, but I, the idea of having a random person come into my mom's house and pack orders doesn't sit that well with me. So if you run a clothing brand and you are fulfilling your own stock, this type of cardboard box is game changing. What I would say to anyone starting a brand themselves is don't rush into, basically you want to try and keep your overheads as low as possible. So keeping as much stock at home for as long as possible. Don't rent a unit unless you live in an area where rents are incredibly cheap. Don't even hire staff. Like you want to be keeping all of your costs as low as possible until you literally need to. The idea of doing it is far more romantic than actually doing it. When you actually do it, you're like, oh, this is really expensive. And unless you really need it, like don't basically. Oh, my labels are all out of order. I think the one really tricky thing that I think we're still trying to work out is like how much stock to order and when. And there are certain ways to look at your analytics and make calculations based off of that. But when you start out, you get kind of obsessed with the idea of ordering as much stock as possible, but then you might screw up your cash flow because you spend too much money and then that stock might take months to shift. It's, it's better to try and order in lower quantities initially, test it, see how well it sells, and then you can always do a bigger restock. The most important thing at the end of the day when doing this kind of business is essentially the customer. Product is incredibly important, but you're also gonna lose customers unless you keep them happy. And a huge part of that comes down to fulfilling orders promptly it comes down to customer service if they have a, an issue with your product if something breaks like it has to be a key focus because without the customer you are literally nothing like you won't get sales so that is everything i think we can show you today i'm going to take this to the post office right now hopefully you've enjoyed the video obviously make sure you subscribe like all that stuff we're going to be trying to put out a lot more content I think I said at the start and also we want to be doing a little bit more about this where we open up the brand a little bit show a little bit more off and if you feel like picking up a piece of clothing then we're internally grateful so thank you very much goodbye